snowing on my seat. Yeah, actual snow. The vents are so cold, they're blowing. We had to shut them all off. We're back at the airport. So we're heading off to DC. Washington DC, like there's any other DC. We had a great breakfast at Snooze, which is an AM eatery. Their slogan is uh, 8 a.m. is the new 5 p.m. So you can get mimosas, Bloody Marys, and all kinds of good breakfast concoctions. So I had a breakfast burrito. It was very good. Angela had the, uh, I guess it was a deconstructed pot pie or something? Well, this is called the breakfast pot pie. Oh, oh breakfast pot pie. So. And we're here early, waiting for the plane. We just got to finish having drinks at Rosario's. A little pre-flight uh, margarita, prickly pear margaritas, really good stuff. If you're in San Antonio, check it out. I mean, it was like iPads at the bar. We're gonna do a walk through this room that we have here in DC. Pretty cool place. I'm gonna go down this hallway here, which opens up into this kind of a living area. It's got a kitchen. It doesn't have a mini fridge, it has a full fridge. I think this is an extended stay. Andrew pointed out this is an extended stay suite, probably. I got a nice little dining table here. Bedroom's a nice room, got a sitting chair, again another TV. Pretty cool stuff. So we're here at a restaurant called Town Meat Farmer. Uh, it's in the downtown area here, just off of Pennsylvania Avenue. It's a very busy place. Hey everybody, good morning. It is day two. There's not some big wedding going on in, in England or something like that. Um, May 19th is actually our anniversary. The day Andrew and I got married in Vegas. So. Aww. We're gonna check out the Library of Congress. It's something Andrew's been wanting to check out. Nice selfie there with the Capitol building in the background. All right, we're inside the Library of Congress. And the building does look, as a matter of fact, if you look over there in that corner, you can see a very recent roof leak that is that actually damaged part of the, uh, the murals over here. So. We're in the office of the Librarian of Congress. 
This is pretty impressive. They got some amazing stuff on the ceiling. Nineteen eighties. Yeah. Okay, so this this is what it used to be. So for almost a hundred years, this was the the office of the librarian of the Library of Congress. So what we're doing now is we're walking through a tunnel that connects the Library of Congress to the U.S. Capitol. No, no videography or photography okay. is allowed in this theater. If you tour group, if you need to leave early, let me know. I'll point you the way out. If you leave on your own, you'll join the Capitol Police tour. <laughs> <laughs> you'll learn about your rights. <laughs> United States Capitol. How does it feel? It's official, right? When there's columns everywhere. Uh, this room is our first of three. It's called the Crypt. What do you usually find in a crypt? Dead people. Dead people. We're surrounded by them. I don't mean that. But all the statues are statues of dead people. Oh. <laughs> it is sandstone. If you look closely, you might see some of the um, some of these scratches on the columns. And those are something from our foundation as a country and our foundation of building. You see, these markings are left behind by the people who actually built the United States Capitol. Some of them were Scottish immigrants. They got paid a wage for working there. But most of the labor was done by enslaved African Americans, people who had no freedom of their own, built a building that stands as an icon of freedom all around the world. Um, at the center of the room, if you see the chandelier, under the chandelier is a star that marks the center of the Capitol building and the center of our capital city. When they laid out the city of Washington, starting from scratch, they put the people's branch of government at the center. Four paintings of the American Revolution. These are the first paintings added to the rotunda in 1826 when this room opened. To your left, the Declaration of Independence. You see John Adams in the brown suit and it's Roger Sherman. The next painting, the Battle of Saratoga. The turning point of the revolution gets allies like France and Spain on board the American side. With their help and only with their help do we get the final victory, the Battle of Yorktown in 1781. The last painting, 1783. George Washington, after the Treaty of Paris, has an entire army ready to do anything he says. And what does he do? He gives his power up. A resignation letter in his hand, handing it over to the Continental Congress. So, I, I'm just a bill. And I'm sitting here on Capitol Hill. <laughs> I'm just a bill. Yes, I'm only a bill. And I'm sitting here on Capitol Hill. We have a hike, though. I mean, like, we're here. Then we'd have to go and then go up there. <laughs> we're standing here in front of the White House. Andrew getting a good selfie. So behind me is the Washington Monument. And there's a little bit of history in the monument that you just don't normally see. It's the changing in the stones. So the stones change right about three quarters up, or one quarter up. And what that means is that's where the Civil War happened. And they stopped construction on the monument. Then after the Civil War, they continued to complete the monument. So the history all around the city, they. It's evident if you know where to look, so pretty cool. So, so tell us what this is. This is a big statue of George Washington. Uh, done by uh, Horatio Greenbow. Um, it was uh, commissioned um, to mark the uh, 100th anniversary of George Washington's birth. Wow. Um, so um, the sword that he appears to be handing back is because he handed back Power. Power. But uh, people didn't really like it. Uh, the yeah. artist styled him after Zeus, so he is bare chested wearing sandals. <laughs> During the 40s, rationing was a big thing. You can see even waste fats were encouraged to be saved 
for use of explosives. Nothing went to waste in World War II. Up on these boards here, you can see where the homeowner who built it carved which studs go into which position with certain symbols so that he can line them up later on. Now we just nail some two by fours together and build a wall and call it a day. It's a purple kitchen aid. Oh. Do they not make this? I've never seen that color. Maybe they made it special for her. Maybe. This is Georgia Child. Bon appétit. That is a meat cleaver there, if I've ever seen one. So this is Julia Child's kitchen. We're comparing all the stuff that we have compared to what Julia has. We come pretty close though. So here we have the, uh, the classic scenario of buying that new car, right? Here we are, sales guy. And over here, back here, you can see him. We have the guy looking through the window, wishing on that new car. Things like this, I would think, would be pretty hard to counter with. Yeah, a lot of countries are going to plastic. There's um, some English. Here's Diners Club, it's the first credit card created back in, I guess the first one was 1957. So if you ever looked at your receipt and found that you were double charged, you can thank James and John Riddy for coming up with the idea of the incorruptible cashier for keeping track of transactions and providing a printed receipt. They could be kind of hard to vlog with a camera that size. Probably so. <laughs> so here's some journals from some inventors, uh, prototype fishing game and some other things here. But the overarching story is, if you don't write it down, it may never exist. <laughs>